Hi, my name is Kate Smulligan, and I'm a physical therapist and PhD candidate at the University of Colorado. Today, I'll be sharing some of the recent research we've done in the Colorado Concussion Lab through Children's Hospital Colorado Sports Medicine Center to further our understanding of dizziness after adolescent concussion. A concussion is a traumatic brain injury induced by biomechanical forces. It's most frequently thought of as being caused by a direct blow to the head, which it often is. However, concussion can also occur from contact to the body with force transmitting through the neck up to the head. One of the most common, complex, and frustrating symptoms after concussion is dizziness, and that will be our focus today. The sport concussion Office Assessment Tool developed by the Concussion and Sport Group was published in June of 2023, and this is the recommended outpatient concussion assessment. A symptom inventory checklist is included in the tool and involves rating 23 common concussion symptoms on a scale of zero to six. Dizziness is included as one of the 23 symptoms, but due to the complexity of dizziness, more than a zero to six rating is required to understand what impairments are driving a patient's dizziness and what needs to be addressed. It used to be thought that the best approach after concussion was cocoon therapy, or resting and staying in a dark room until symptoms resolved. However, we are now understanding through work in our lab and others that physical activity soon after concussion helps people recover faster. After an athlete sustains a concussion, they need to progress through the six-step return to play protocol, shown here and updated in June of 2023. This protocol is designed to progressively increase physical activity without exacerbating symptoms. So looking at step two, there's recommended intensity guidelines starting at light intensity and progressing to moderate intensity. Once an athlete can tolerate all six steps, they can return to their sport. However, dizziness is a complex multifactorial symptom and all of the causes of dizziness may not be adequately addressed by this return to play protocol. So it's possible that athletes may meet the criteria for return to play clearance while still having underlying deficits. Often dysfunction in the vestibular or oculomotor systems, the cervical spine, or the autonomic nervous system contribute to dizziness after concussion. A comprehensive dizziness assessment should consider each of these systems. And because so many systems contribute to dizziness, our work has focused on understanding what other symptoms or functions are impacted by dizziness. The first study we'll be discussing today investigated the, the association between dizziness and both sleep quality and postural stability. We observed that those with dizziness after concussion had worse sleep quality compared to a concussion group without dizziness and uninjured controls. So from this research, we see that dizziness and poor sleep quality are associated after concussion. However, we cannot determine what is driving what. In this same study, we also observed a very similar association with dizziness and postural instability. Those with dizziness after concussion had worse or slower tandem gait times compared to both those without dizziness after concussion and uninjured controls. So we see that dizziness is associated with worse postural stability, which is not all that surprising given the vestibular system involvement in both dizziness and balance. To start to understand how the neck is related to dizziness, we examined patient report of neck and shoulder pain and the association with dizziness after concussion. We observed that those who reported dizziness also reported higher levels of neck and shoulder pain. So we can see an association between dizziness and neck pain. Again, we cannot determine if dizziness is driving neck pain or vice versa, but we see that there may be some neck involvement in patients with dizziness. And this highlights the importance of a multifactorial evaluation for patients with dizziness to identify all potential impairments that could be driving dizziness. Our next study investigated the association between dizziness and physical activity after concussion. We observed that for every one point increase in dizziness severity, there was about a 1,000 step per day decrease. So as dizziness increased, steps per day decreased. For people who rated dizziness a zero compared to those who rated it a five, that is about a difference of 5,000 steps per day. So there may be a self-limiting component of dizziness. Since we know that physical activity early after concussion is an important factor for recovery, dizziness may be a barrier to physical activity and therefore slow recovery. In the final study we'll discuss today, we investigated moderate to vigorous physical activity initiated early after concussion and how that impacted recovery. We compared those who participated in more than 30 minutes per day of moderate to vigorous physical activity, and that's the green group, to those who participated in 30 minutes or less per day, and that's the orange group. 
We observed that those participating in more than 30 minutes per day of moderate to vigorous physical activity had a faster recovery time. The return to play guidelines discussed earlier recommend early symptom limited physical activity and our results suggest that a higher intensity of physical activity early after concussion may be beneficial to speed symptom resolution time. A lot more work is needed here, and our ongoing work is investigating exercise dosage, including intensity, to further our understanding of the optimal intensity and timing of physical activity during concussion recovery. So overall, we have observed that dizziness is associated with many other symptoms and functions after concussion, including decreased sleep quality, postural instability, neck pain, and decreased physical activity. We also observed that higher intensity physical activity may be beneficial for recovery. Therefore, as clinicians, when managing patients with concussion, assessing and treating dizziness early after concussion may help patients increase their physical activity sooner, which may in turn promote faster recovery. For a list of the studies that we discussed today, please see the links provided below. For more information about our ongoing concussion research, please visit our website. And for more information about concussion treatment or to refer a patient, please visit the Children's Hospital Sports Medicine Center website.